Oh, it's so it was extraordinary. I'll tell you the weirdest thing that happened when I, I did the show, it was a Saturday and I was going home to Scotland on a Sunday morning and a Chinese guy at Heathrow asked for my autograph. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm famous. <laughs> and I, I signed it for him, but when I got to, to Glasgow Airport, I was coming, I got off the plane and come through the airport itself, people all started to clap. Oh, really? They'd all be watching it on television. They, they, they'd they... never heard stuff like that before. Oh. And, and it has changed. Humour has, has, since those early days, has changed so radically. Yeah, yeah. I was just doing an English tour there, and I was telling the audience that in Bournemouth, I, I did a concert on the Saturday night, and on the Sunday I had a day off, and I was walking along the beach, and, and I've often wondered what I've done to people, what's, what's become of me? I was walking in the wind, it was the winter, and I was walking along in my little jacket, and I hear a guy <laughs> running behind me, <laughs> Billy, 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 and oh, Christ, I thought I was on my own. And I turned around, that's an older guy, probably the age I am now, with a little boy. And he's going, Billy, Billy, Billy! And the boy, I'll never forget, it's called Gavin. The man was Scottish, the boy was English, must be his granddad or something. He says, would you give Gavin your autograph? And I said, sure. It's to Gavin, best wishes, Billy Conley. Gave him a, and they walked away and I went up on my walk and then I hear behind me, I thought, oh Christ, they're back. Billy, Billy! And he says, look, uh, Gavin's given me brain damage here. He says, could you tell him to fuck off? <laughs> <laughs> I said, what? He says, Gavin wants you to tell him to fuck off. <laughs> so I said, OK, Gavin, give me your book. <laughs> and I wrote, fuck off, Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> he shut the book and I said, no, fuck off. <laughs> and he went, yes! That? I don't know what that is at all. I just, I, it all passes me by. It's just, it takes my breath away. When you were, when you were growing up, though, in the tenements in Glasgow, I mean, did you have a, any notion that, that you were different? I mean, what I, I want to ask you this question. I came a wonderful quote from somebody who interviewed you called you One Man Species. Did you feel different? No, I do. I feel the same as everybody else. But, the, the but did of... you have a notion that you were going to make it? You're yeah. going to get out of that, did you? Yeah. Uh, but how did, I mean, how did you know? I mean, what, what I was don't it know. you were going to do? It was the kind of dream I had of a, a, a... No, it wasn't really a dream. I feel really stupid saying it. But I kind of took it for granted that I was going to be OK, that I was going to be famous, and that would be all right, and everything, everything would be fine. <laughs> and I always ex I accepted it as a kind of dream, but most of it, 75% of me took it as reality. Yeah. And I started to kind of live it. And I think that's where it is. I think you, it's belief. It isn't, you know, you hear people say, hang on to your dream and yeah, all that all kind that of stuff. stuff. Yeah. Well, that, that's OK. It's a bit Disneyland for me. But I think if you actually believe something, there's a great chance that it might happen, mm. you know? I know that if you set your sights low, that'll definitely happen. So there's, there's no difference, I think, in setting your sights high. Mm. In your own head, you don't need to tell anybody. I remember telling the science teacher at school, Bill Sheridan, he was going round the class asking what everybody wanted to be, and they all wanted to be marine engineers, you know, it's Glasgow, get onto a boat and sail the world, and da da da. You know, that Scottish engineer, oh, she can't take the pressure, Captain! <laughs> oh, it's in every movie that was ever made. Right, yeah. Well, it's, it's just, he came to me and he said, what do you want to be? And I said, a comedian. And everybody exploded with laughter. So you the knew then that you wanted to be a comedian? I wanted to be a comedian. I'd seen it, Jimmy Logan and all these But guys. is it a compulsion? Do you have a compulsion to make people laugh? Yeah. In every circumstance? Not now, I don't. You don't know. But then I did. You did? Yeah. yeah. But just for myself, really. Yes. And sometimes it's agony. Like, if you go to the airport, you, they always say, did you pack your bag yourself? Now, if you're a comedian... <laughs> <laughs> You have to do this, you know, and I'm going on planes, they say, did you pack your bag yourself? And Pamela's going, don't. <laughs> I'm just desperate to say, no, no, a big Arab guy in the hotel. <laughs> oh, a nice big man. What was his name? Mohammed. Yeah, I saw, I saw it in his flying licence. Go, ah! <laughs> I just, it's, there's an urge to do it all the time. Yeah. What about your music? Because, I mean, you, you seem to have neglected that. In you, uh, do, uh, do I hear you writing a musical? Oh, well, oh, that's, oh, Jesus, I wonder if I can even remember it. I, I, was, I was thinking of writing a Middle Eastern musical <laughs> called <laughs> Saddam, You're Rocking the Book. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
The chorus will all have ukuleles and the people all said, Saddam, oh, Saddam, oh. you're rocking the boat. <laughs> <laughs> and a big picture of Yasser Arafat will come down at the back. And go, oh, Yasser, that's my baby. <laughs> oh, Yasser, the boat. <laughs> and a, a big staircase will appear and Colin Powell will come down one side and Condoleezza Rice down the other side. Condoleezza! Condoleezza! <laughs> <laughs> and then George W is going to come on. Listen, listen, mushroom clouds are far. Listen, <laughs> listen, mushroom clouds are far. It's nuclear, it's nuclear. It's nuclear. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So much to do and so little time, eh? It's a wee shame, isn't it? Aye. It's a wee shame. And uh, do you know what I always promised myself? What? And I must get round to it. Uh, when I was younger, when I was about 30 and all that, Aye. I always thought, when I'm an old guy, I'm going to get loads of tattoos. <laughs> and I'll be a weird-looking old guy wandering along. Because I've always been a kind of odd-looking person anyway, apparently, you know. Because I try my best to look smart, but people think I look weird, you know. And even when I, when I wear nice clothes, like if I have a tuxedo, I look like a man with a head transplant, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I always promised myself I would be a nuisance, and I haven't got round to it yet. <laughs> I, always, I want to go to Parliament and sit in the public bench just going, Crap! Lies! <laughs> Lies! <laughs> liar! Where's the floppy disk, you liar? <laughs> in church. I would love to do it in church. You know when they say those things that Christians say all the time? I am one in him and he is one in me. Explain! <laughs> <laughs> Explain! Because <laughs> <laughs> I was a wee Catholic listening to these people when I was a boy saying, what, what, he's his own father, what's happening here? <laughs> You'll do all that, all that in the fullness of time. Oh, I know. fully and, expect uh, to, I'm desperate well, to actually. Billy, oh, of course you're staying on, we've got bags of other guests on Mitch. You do, have other, other people on? Oh, there are other people <laughs> There are, well, there are. Oh, I they... wondered why they were in the room. I know. <laughs> you think they I thought they were here to see me. <laughs> <laughs> there are, of course, Billy Conley.